Welcome to the 129th episode of the MC Knitting Adventures podcast. My name is Colleen. And my name is May. Welcome returning viewers. And for those of you watching us for the first time, we're so glad you could join us. Now, for those of you who are brand new and don't know, Colleen and I started this podcast and we started to go around different yarn stores in mm -hmm. Ontario. Yes. And then we kind of expanded to out west of Canada. And then we started to expand to uh, America. We went to Michigan, mm -hmm. different states. And we then we went Florida. to as far as Florida. And then we went to Scotland and went to Ireland mm -hmm. and we would visit all the yarn stores mm -hmm. and we would talk about our adventure of the places right. we were exactly. and we would talk about all the yarn stores and there's so many out there. I know, so many. Yes. So anyway, um, we started doing that and then COVID hit. Mm -hmm. So then Colleen and I do a lot of crafts in the house. So then we thought, well, we can't travel. So we thought we would do kind of a crafting adventure. Exactly. And then winter comes and the COVID's over and then winter comes <laughs> and Canada, the roads aren't really the best to travel in right, in the winter. Right. And so then we can't really travel in the winter. <laughs> became a thing yeah so then we just started doing our crafts and thought you might be interested in some of the things that Absolutely. we do at the house so on today's adventure to make a long story short mm -hmm. we're going to be ta just talking about some of the crafts that we were involved in and some of the things right. that we're working on that you might be interested in getting into too so but before we talk about all of that <laughs> Colleen will talk about what we're wearing so first of all we're going to talk about what May is wearing and she is wearing the sock head cowl by Kelly McClure um, and it is a wonderful pattern and I actually had pulled this out because I'd made it for myself and I was using it um, in the winter to keep my neck warm I thought because it's got lots of stretch to it so it's easy to pull over you don't ever catch it on your earrings it's perfect and and the, the yarn that I had used was wool free allegro and that's by wisdom yarns and so what's nice about that you don't have to worry about anything picky about that um, and so May was looking awfully chilly one day. I said, May, <laughs> here, take this. I said, this is perfect. You can just pull it on, pull it off, easy. It's not going to be picky around your neck. And she decided it was hers. Yeah, I haven't had it off since. <laughs> it, you know, I, I just have to talk about this thing. Honestly, it's not anything I would ask Colleen to knit for me. It's no. not anything I ever wanted to knit. It okay. doesn't even look like anything in the pattern. Like, it just no. looks like this thing. Long tube, which is exactly what it is. And I have to tell you, when I go out and I put this on in my coat, mm -hmm. I just throw it over my head like this because it's a lot of stretch, like yep. you say. Mm -hmm. It's warm and makes all the difference in the world when I'm going to scrape the car. Right. I just can't believe it. And so the weather has changed. And so I had it on this morning when mm -hmm. we went for our lovely strawberry tarts and um, <laughs> coffee. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so thankful for it. And I said to Colleen, I really have to talk about this on the podcast because mm -hmm. it's not something that, I would, like, it's not something that you would look at and think, I really want one of those. Right. But honestly, it's just yeah, the it's best really thing. it's a nice thing. Yeah. It's the best thing. And I could talk about it all day because I love it so much. It's probably one of my favorites. Oh, that's good to know. There you go. So, so. It's, it's helped me out this winter, and I hope I don't ever have to use it again after today. <laughs> so next year. But what you did say to me was, you need to make yourself one. So yes. that is in my future, I can tell. But yes. it's a lovely pattern. and. It's well written, easy to follow, and it really Takes is one just skein a skein of yarn. You one told me skein, today. yeah, one skein of fingering weight yarn. Yep, makes all the difference. So if you have bought a skein and you don't know what to do with it, the sockhead cowl's great. Um, so that's the first thing. That's what May is wearing. Now, what I am wearing is something called La Laguna by Greta Menson, and this is out of. Oh, Speaking of the lovely yarn, Midnight Cravings yarn. It's their light sock. And I love this color because you could either wear it with blue, but it's nice to put over black. It kind of yep. brightens it up a little bit. And I had, you don't have to block it aggressively. I took mine from 50 inches basically to 72 inches, but you don't have to make it that big. But what I like about it is it lets you, if you, if you are able to make it, when you block it a little bit right. bigger, then you have enough to tie it in a knot. So there is something called the Sophie Scarf by Petite Knit, which is similar to this. Um, this one has eyelets in it, and it's lovely. Lots there of yarn overs and it's nice. Yeah, it I makes it look color. a little bit of lighter. So I mean, I've got it on with the turtleneck, but it could be, you know, if you're going out, you know, maybe you can wear it with a blouse or whatever. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. It's just that thing that'll keep you a little bit warmer. You could put it around your shoulders if you want. Jean jacket would go great with a oh. jean jacket. <laughs> is that a thing now? That's a thing. I'm wearing it with a jean jacket. <laughs> okay, wait till you see that. 
<laughs> so that's what I'm wearing and next we're going to talk about finished objects. My first finished object is the Christine button cowl and that's by Cozy Up Knits and you saw this last episode. It was all knit ready to go and I just needed to sew in the ends, put the buttons on. Now I have to tell you what is funny about this. It, it doesn't matter whether you take, okay, let me rephrase that. There is an end that has less uh, moss stitch on it. That's the one that has to be on top. So you would think that as soon as you put it on top, the buttons are always going to be on the same side. Well, no, it doesn't have to be because it's a rectangle and so you can turn it. So this one is crossed the left side over. Most often I do the right side over, but I was busy working away and went, oh yeah, I crossed it the other way. doesn't make any difference. It still wears nicely. And the yarn that I'm using is Loops and Threads Charisma. It is acrylic. And it is the one of the tweeds. So it has 93 yards in it. If you get the ones that are plain, they have 109 yards in it. And I get this from Michaels. And this is one of our big sellers in our booth. Yes. So I say to Colleen, get knitting those. Get knitting, <laughs> get those. knitting those. Exactly. And they, you said they knit up quite nice. They do. They knit. And it's nice to do cables. And I actually almost have that cable pattern matter. Every time I think, I'm, I just always look anyway. Just that to cable is a nice cable. It's there. a nice so cable. Nice. Really nice job on that. Oh, Very thank nice. you so much. So that's that. Now, my next finished object was almost done last time. I just had to cast it off, block it, and then put a tassel on. So here it is. I'll let you hold it up. So we were busy debating the length of the tassel. So this is the White Thorn Cowl by uh, Megan Nodefer of Pip and Pin. And lovely pattern. Lots of fun. And it's nice. It's one of those ones that would slip over. And, and then, how was it to make this tassel? The, making the tassel was great. There's lots of YouTube videos. I watched the uh, Bakery Bears, um, because I'm one of their Patreon people, um, watched theirs, which um, Kay does a great job. And then the trick was to find, try and figure out how to sew it on. And I wanted it to be sturdy because it's the yarn is a DK yarn. It is the Loving Path Fiber Arts, and this is their Tweed DK. So now I have two cowls. That are tree decay. So now this would than, this would kind of weight this down a little exactly, bit. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And actually what happened, I had bought that pattern a while ago and when I wore I'm gonna have to say it again, the birds and ships <laughs> <laughs> all the time by Caitlin Hunter. Um, and it had that tassel. I thought, oh there's another pattern with that on it, and I liked it. So hence there, you go. there it is. And I've got now I've got a couple of tweety things and I really, really like it. So now Back to the world of booth knitting. So, first of all, I have made, I took some of the um, Sashko embroidery that I'd done and I made it into coasters. Now, I did, I had five that I had made the little squares of. And so I took two of them and I did them differently. So the one I just did fabric on the back. Which is and, this one you can tell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the other one I did felt on the back because I wanted to ask me, what do you think, which one would be better? And you decided. I think the felted one is a little, a little more thicker. substantial. Yeah. Yeah. I like that word. I use that word a lot. You do. Substantial. <laughs> <laughs> you do. But it feels uh, more solid. More, I know. More like more, a coaster. Yeah, more like a coaster. And I think it would be, uh, this one just feels like a piece of cloth, which is right. nice too, right. but. I, so know. what I'm going to be able to do now is I've got the other three and I'll use the felt and then we'll have a set of four. That's really nice. Those will yeah. be nice. Those would sell, I think. Yes, I think so. Yeah, I'm yeah. hoping so. If you like to do them. I mean, I do. No point you know what? Them. It is so meditative. You know, you're just in and out, in and out. It's like a running stitch. Right. And it's, it's beautiful. Like, I love well, that. I, like it. I think this is called the Seven Treasures, I think. Right. They're both really nice patterns. Yeah. Though, but yeah. Exactly. That's fun. So when you were talking about us doing different crafts, there's, there's another, another different craft. It's funny when you go to look at one thing and then it leads you to another Nothing. one, the joy of Google. You go <laughs> from one place to another and that's what happens. So that's that. Now, last time, last time I showed you. Oh, these were nice for Easter. <laughs> for ah. Easter. Down it goes. I showed you these tea towels. So it was $6.97 for two tea towels, which makes four. Of these. You have four. I have four done. And that's the Bernat Handicrafter, which is great cotton. It's this lovely. Is, this and you can buy really nice. Uh, we're going to uh, to have a booth and we're going to have it one of the um, elderly homes yes. uh, for seniors. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that they would really use these and I think enjoy so. those. I think so. And the fact that you don't use yarn for here, you use this cotton. It doesn't. 
Oh. Yeah, it doesn't stretch out. They wash. We have them all the time. Yeah. And we wash them all the exactly. time. And they wash great. They hang great. And they mm -hmm. come out just looking like this. Yeah. So nice exactly. job. Now, do you leave these tags on? I do. The people I will do. cut those yeah. off if they want exactly. to. Exactly. But those are great. I love that. Thank you. And didn't take you long to do uh, no. four of those. No. And we have a couple of tutorials out there. Exactly. So we have one from the camera looking this way and one from the camera being behind me. I think the behind me one was the updated version, which I think would be an easier one to follow. Yeah, those are great. So even if you're just new to crochet, this is a great pattern. Very nice. Lots to sell. You've been busy. I've been busy. And yeah. once again, something else to sell. <laughs> so um, my last finished object is the Bombini Cowl by K.F. Jones. And I used a uh, Barocco Vintage DK. And what I did was I bought two, um, these are 100 gram skeins. And there is one of them done. So um, this pattern has for fingering weight and has for worsted weight. And this is a DK weight, so I had to do a little bit of juggling, but not too badly. But I like the length. I've got it the length that the pattern stays. So I did my juggling just nicely. And it's, those are like the colors, colors that you yeah. selected. And also one of our subscribers who's a loyal subscriber, mm -hmm. she had mentioned some great colors too to use. Okay. And, and so, um, oh, okay. yeah, I'll take look a at look. those colors are great too. But this, awesome. these are nice colors. Nice. I think that would be Oh, nice. it would yeah. look really nice on you. Yeah, well, you made the, do I take another one? <laughs> <laughs> well, we have yeah. to sell some. Yeah. So anyway, so oh, that's a lot really of finished nice. objects. But there we go. Those are my finished objects. And May, how about you? Well, I'm still working on my, um, um, you know, my uh, ancestry thing, which I love very mm -hmm. much. And if uh, my relative cousin, uh, once removed, uh, <laughs> Margaret, if you're watching, Hi, hello out there. Um, it's been great talking to her and, and connecting with her. I really appreciate that. And I have to have the relevant info out there. That's, mm -hmm. that's awesome. So we're going to have exactly. to make a trip to Scotland. So that could be another one of our podcasts. Oh, that would be but fantastic. But I've been really enjoying that. And then I'll talk about some other things in um, the craft section of the okay, crafts that perfect. I've been up to and some, some things I've been doing. I put together a drill press that I bought. Oh, I'm very brilliant. excited about that. And mm -hmm. I've made a video opening the box, how to put it together oh, perfect. and how it works. So that's something in, in progress. Excellent. But, and um, hopefully, hopefully we'll get that video up, uh, you know, next week or so. If you have a drill press, anybody that's knitter <laughs> has a drill press, you, never know. you never know. <laughs> All right. So those are our finished objects. And next we're going to talk about works in progress. My first work in progress is another Bombini cowl. That's the one by KF Jones. Um, and once again, it's a Barocco Vintage DK. So we picked the two colors. And so this one has the darker color at the top. Now, I still have a lot of yarn left. I am thinking I either can make one more or two more after that. So out of two skeins, if you're thinking of Christmas presents and starting now, you could make, right now I can make three out of them. I might be able to stretch out and make four out of them. I have to see, I have to weigh it and figure out what's going on. But I think it looks nice both ways. Um, it's nice to have the dark color by your face um, and then th this kind of the lighter color shows the texture a little differently. Right. Yeah. Both That's of nice. those would look nice. Yeah, I really like that. Exactly. Yeah, I can't believe how far that yarn goes. I know. Um, I know. You know. It's fantastic. Oh. So I'm really enjoying it. It's nice and soft. It's um, the what it has in it is 52% acrylic, 40% wool, 8% nylon. So it's not picky. It feels really, really nice um, against your skin. That's for sure. So that's. My first work in progress. Now my second work in progress is an embroidery thing that I finished the embroidery part and I pressed it and then I've been trying to figure out how to finish it. So it's Cherish is what it is. Um, I got a bought this from Amazon. I think there were four different embroidery things came with the hoops and the whole thing. So what I did, and there's all kinds of different ways to finish it. So what I did was I trimmed it. I guess we should look at the, let's look at the That's embroidery right. first. <laughs> There's the embroidery. And then I trimmed the back and then I hot glued it. And then what I did was you I hot glued this, this into the frame onto the frame. Yeah. So that you can't take this off. You anymore. are not taking it off. Nope. It okay. is what it is. So you can leave it like that. It's not going to fray. I could just hang it up on the wall if I wanted to, but I thought I'd like to finish it a little nicer. So I found this felt, which is just about the color of the bench. And I thought I'm going to attach it to the back. So then that was the big question. So we've been debating. Do I stitch it on, which you could do. Do I hot glue it on, 
which I could do, or do I fabric glue it on, which will give me some more time to play with. So I'm leaning towards the fabric glue, but I'm still not 100% I think sure. the fa fabric glue would just be easier for, uh, you know. I think the hot glue would be hard because you'd be able to do half and then you'd have to lift. Yeah, I, I'm thinking. Yeah, I think that would be nice. Yeah, I think yeah. it will be nice to finish be nice it off. nice on the back like that. Yes, yeah. I think so. Yeah. So that'll be nice when it's all said and done. All done. Beautiful pattern on there. Yeah, I really, really do yeah, like that Yeah, the different one. shades of green and yeah. all that. Well, that was the phone, and we're back. <laughs> you know, it never fails. We can go two days without a phone call. As soon as we do a podcast, the phone rings. There we are. <laughs> so that's that. Now, my last work in progress is something very exciting. So it is, the yarn is Polka Dot Creek, and this is the Self-Striping Sock Set Toronto Maple Leafs. So, May Sun Scott, big fan of Toronto Maple Leafs. So Hockey. Team. hockey team so I thought well we can do something about that and for their birthdays I always do a pair of socks and I just got off the phone with him mm -hmm. and he was just in Toronto in the Hockey Hall of Fame and he was he was just so like it was so amazing he said Good. so if you want to go to the Toronto Hockey Fame I think it's worth it he said yeah. there was activities things right. to do oh, he wait. saw the Stanley Cup yeah. he saw like all the history they had right. Wayne Gretzky who's a big hockey guy they saw um, his this hockey net that he had with the oh, three thousand wow. goal that he made and they have all kinds of things there, so it's well Lots worth it. He said, "Oh, fantastic!" Now this comes with um, the blue and white striped is fifty grams, and the mini skein that it comes with is the gray, and it's twenty grams. Now I knew that was going to push it to make a pair of socks because usually I have a hundred gram skein. So what I did was I ordered two of those kits, and I also bought some opal sock in the royal blue and it matches almost perfectly. And I did that so I could stretch this because I'm hoping to make Scott his pair of socks for his birthday and hopefully there will be enough left that I can figure out a way of getting you some Toronto Maple Leaf socks as well. Oh, that'd be cool. They'll be shorties. But I think yeah. I can work it out somehow. And also Colleen and I are fans of Toronto Maple Leafs too. Yeah. We, we yeah. often on a Saturday night will watch the hockey game. That's right. When, when Toronto wants to win. Exactly. <laughs> and the last time I was a Saturday night and um, we were talking, I was talking on the phone to my mom and all of a sudden I hear May screaming. I'm going, what's, and my mom's going, what's going on? I said, she's watching hockey. It's okay. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so I am doing one of those putting different patterns together. So first of all, I am doing the Katie Lou sock pattern by Katie Lou Green. So that's what I'm doing to start with. Now what I did was I made a nice deep uh, rib and then I'm starting it. So remember, I'm trying to stretch this yarn a little longer. So that's the royal blue. That's gonna be the stripe. I'm gonna make a contrast heel and a contrast toe. That's gonna to save me some more. Um, this is how it's working. I'm gonna weigh it once I get done and then I'll be able to see how much I have left and hopefully I can do that. Now, your color choices were absolutely amazing for Toronto Maple Leafs colors. Like, well, it, it, it helps actually... when you buy Toronto Maple Leafs yarn. <laughs> <laughs> and what was really good is Polka Dot Creek a little while ago, we're having a sale. And I went, May, it's the time for me to do this. Oh, really? They yeah. actually named it the Toronto Maple Leafs? Yeah, they did it on purpose. They've got different oh, hockey, hockey teams. teams? Oh, yeah. cool. And sometimes you can get them and they don't have the mini. And I'll easily use those grays for other heels and toes. Yeah, that's but I great. wanted to make these ones really These are cool awesome. Mine. My son's going to appreciate these and appreciate the work that goes into them. Oh, well, thank, thank you. Thank you now, that. I am going to put in this different heel. And that comes from the Lattice Top Socks. And and this is a butterfly heel is what Kay Jones. Uh, says that it is um, it's her design and the reason why I'm going to do that is because it's going to be really important that these stripes stay stripes and if you do it with a heel flap and gusset it changes it a little bit and I don't want to do that so I'm going to put in that heel um, I did that with his licorice all oh, his all, all sorts, sorts socks yeah. so it should be fine I know they fit his feet so that's, that's that. great. So those are my works in progress, and me. You've been so busy. Like oh, you doing put all me kinds to of things. shame sometimes. <laughs> I, I think I do more lounging than you do, or something. No, but, you uh, know what it is. You say, you know, we really need to tidy up a little bit. I'm not going well. Huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's stuff yeah, everywhere. That's, yes, that's a good point. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So, I'm usually washing the floor or cleaning exactly, or something like exactly. that. Not that you don't do anything. No, but I'm not no. insinuating that because you you get up like at six thirty in the morning, mm -hmm. you go grocery shop and you mm -hmm. lug in all this stuff, mm -hmm. and I never have to. Uh, you know, every time I want a banana or I, I need something out of the fridge, it's there. Voila! Voila. <laughs> a 
pop anything. I don't have to do there anything. So uh, I appreciate all the work that you well, do. I do try to take care of you. You do a great job. Oh, thank you. Now, um, works in progress, were you saying? Yes, for you. Okay, I'm going to show you this. And oh, I'm not going to tell you what it is this? until we do our um, adventure piece. Ooh, and it's it looks a work like a handle for a purse. Am I right? It could be. Yeah, it's a work in progress for okay. sure. And I will show you the uh, finished project. It's exciting. Craft. So yeah, so you'll have to watch that and be waiting for that. All Little right. Suspense. So next we're going to talk about our craft adventure. Now, when I said at the beginning of our uh, podcast was that we haven't been traveling too much. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got some plans for this uh, summer mm -hmm. or the beginning of spring. Mm -hmm. And we're looking forward to doing that. But right now, we've just been into the crafts and doing the crafty things That's for right. our adventure. And yep. it's been a lot of fun. Um, there was a time period there where the garage was warmer yes. than it was. And I was able to set up my drill press, which I'm very proud of. And I'm going to be putting a video out on that. Oh, excellent. Um, to see how you set that up. And with using my drill press, press I was able to m start making um, what do you think it is <laughs> oh look at that there you go <laughs> yeah so I was able to uh, play around with it just for a oh, few uh, you know a couple of days right. and the drill press actually drills straight through the holes oh, and you really kind of need that yeah and I've just been practicing on how to look at um, that it's beautiful how to put these pegs in and how to get the wheels to turn and to right, secure right. those pegs because when it's a kid's toy yes. you don't want to be having things that come apart no that's for sure um, i'm experimenting with this part for yep. the hand to go in because i've seen them with just drilled holes oh i see yeah. and so i'm just that's trying great. to get the pattern down these aren't perfect by any means but i've learned a lot just from doing these couple oh, of ones like that so the more like the weather gets better the yep. more i'll be in that garage to do yep. more of these so i've been working on that working on the video and editing of uh, that and um, basically that's been that's my right. so we're we've got a couple of spring craft shows that we're into one is going to be as you mentioned to um, one of the I'm gonna say old age but that's not retirement homes. Retirement Let's do that. Homes, yeah. Don't say old age. I get in trouble. <laughs> that uh, retirement, retirement homes. homes. Um, we're going to one, and then one is going to be at one of the public schools. Yes, and I've also been working on how to um, set up the booth for the different right. ones because for the senior home, you want things to be at the front. You want maybe right. smaller items. Oh, that's a good um, idea. You know that they can put in their hand. Right. And for the other show at the other place we'll be having to set it up differently. So I've just right. basically got the shell right now, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to be working on how we're going to set that up. Right. So I've been working on a few things. Well, some things just for me <laughs> and some things for the booth. So let's talk about me first. <laughs> okay. It's always all about you. <laughs> well, it isn't, but we'll talk about it. So you have seen the process of me making a af diamond afghan. Um, it was using monk's cloth and it's using yarn. And this is the Karen Simply Soft Paints, which is a lovely yarn to work with. It's acrylic, so this is going to be machine washable and dryable. Um, and this is the pattern book that it comes out of. And I took the class at uh, Stitch It Central um, in London, Ontario on Hamilton Road. Maria, thank you very much. You were a great teacher. So it is all done. So I finished all my weaving. Well, it's it's really hard to show you on camera, but it this is. is heavy and it's yeah. So and it's, it's quite a blanket. This is a Swedish quarter. weaving, and then I put the fringe on and I finished the edges off, and I am very very happy with this. It is beautiful blanket. Yeah. It is beautiful yeah. now. This, this has taken you almost a month to a do? A month, of yes. Of working at it. Um, how many hours a night would you say? Two or three hours a night or longer maybe um, sometimes? Yes, yes. The, the one day when I was going to bed, I couldn't. My hand was really <laughs> sore. And then when I woke up, my thumb was numb. <laughs> because you have to do this motion a lot and I thought okay this has got to change quickly because I'm, I'm right-handed and it's my right hand so it took about an hour for my thumb to be come so I could actually feel it again that's what happens when you have a repetitive uh, that's exactly what that this is turned up, now, yeah. how was it to do this fringe thing here was it, it was good I learned a lot with it but it was really good and Maria was very good at explaining things so I had to do some sewing so it wouldn't come out but I am really pleased with it well the work involved in this is exactly. absolutely amazing just beautiful. So if you notice that I'm doing this back from the blanket because I have lipstick on and I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> it's not that I don't want to talk to you. It's just that I'm thinking, no, 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 it's no. It's beautiful. Thank well, you. It's beautiful. Thanks. Yeah. Really so I'm nice. just going to put that yeah. aside. So I'm going to disappear for a second. Yeah. For our booth, 
we were talking about making the tea towels and the ones that you saw in um, finished objects, those are more eastery ones, but I also have ones, depends on what somebody's kitchen is. So there's something like that. There's one that says C'est la vie. There's another gray stripe. There's something with the little blue. And I like this one because it's got all the cutlery in it. So we've got yeah, a number a of those to sell. This so. is like John Maple Leaf one again. Oh, there you go. Oh, we <laughs> might have to put that in Scott's stocking. <laughs> Speaking of um, Toronto Maple Leafs, I yes. just want to mention that Colleen and I wrote a Canadian Tire. We had a little jaunt today when we yes. were having our strawberry tart. Mm -hmm. And um, we looked at hockey sticks. And I, when did a <laughs> hockey stick become $250? On sale. On sale. But there are $400 hockey sticks. Oh, my goodness. Me. Anyway, I was going to pick my son up a hockey stick, and then I saw the price. I went, uh, no, it's not happening. <laughs> and I thought, well, I know it's like golf clubs, that there's different heights um, and different curves. Yeah. And I thought, no. That's... Yeah. Anyway. There we go. That's that. And these turned out great. And so those are ready for the booth. Yes. I hope those sell. They usually are pretty good sellers. Yes, they are. And you don't charge an arm and a leg. No. So that's good. Just an arm. Just <laughs> <laughs> And you know what? If you don't have a booth, I mean, we're not in this. You're not going to make millions of dollars. No, if you're going to start no. a booth, definitely I wouldn't suggest you borrow any money or anything like that. Right, right. Um, start out small. Yeah. And I think you can make money over time if you want right. to make the money. Right. We mostly do this for hobby yes. because you're not going to pay the mortgages with all of this no. stuff. <laughs> it's basically we're doing crafts because we like doing crafts. That's right. And what do you do with all the stuff? That's true. So you might yeah. as well just... So with my woodworking and that, I right. how many toy cards can you make? That's right. But so um, it's so it's so funny because <laughs> our we've got because of our Googles, we've kind of linked in ways. So usually when I'm looking on Instagram, I'm seeing all kinds of um, yarn and those, and then all of a sudden I'm seeing little toy cars and little <laughs> and scroll saws and that, that kind of thing. I think, oh, oh, I know what Mason's looking, looking at. Yeah, so that's <laughs> kind of fun. fun. Next, we're going to talk about our souvenirs. Souvenirs. I've been everywhere. I'm just saying I've been everywhere. So I started by going to London Yarns, which is maybe about seven or eight minutes away from where we are. Um, and that was because I wanted to pick up some yarn to go with the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs. I wanted to get that royal blue, so I did that. And the other thing I wanted to do was to pick up some more uh, May Loves Navy and White, to pick up some more yarn that will go, so that's Barocco Comfort DK. This wow. is some more of the vintage DK. This is so soft. It is, and this is nice too, and that's gonna make some more of those Bombini cowls. So I just wanted to stock up, um, and I was happy about that. Nice so color. this has um, a little bit of wool in it, and that is, it's got no wool in it at all. Oh, this is really soft. Yeah, but exactly. All is good. That will be interesting good. to see what those look like. Exactly, so Bombini, Bombini, Bombini. That's what we're doing. <laughs> Then, where did I go next? Then I went to Lens Mills because I wanted to see if they had that Karen Simply Soft paints because I had a plan. I always have a plan, but this is my plan. I want to take some monk's cloth, which is what the blanket was that I made, the background, and I want to make it into like a car seat blanket that you just kind of throw over your little one right. when they're in the car. Um, and so I found this. This is called Baby Brights, which is exactly what it is. Right. And so that will be what I weave in and out. Um, and so I was able to find some of that. I looked for other colors, but they were a little bit too strong. So no, that's going to be nice. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. And so obviously I need some monk's cloth. So I was at um, Fabricland and found some monk's cloth. So this is just, um, this is monk's cloth that needs to be washed. So I'll give it a wash. And then I'm going to have to wash it and shrink it as much as it will, well not, dry it, gently wash it, dry it, press it, and then once I know that's what, the size it will become, then I'm good to go. Very nice, and that'll be interesting to see you making a exactly. little car seat blanket with that, that stuff. That is that, my plan. That Swedish weaving now that you know how. I know, Swedish weaving, so much fun. There you I, go. Yeah. So that's for me, and May, how about souvenirs well, for you? I did buy some things. I bought, um, I went to the Goodwill, and I found uh, these three little stacking tables. Oh, excellent. And I'm planning on uh, maybe refinishing them or painting them. I haven't decided okay. yet. Mm -hmm. um, we can always use them in the house, or yes. I could sell them. Right. Also, I bought this, um, I went to the uh, Habitat store. I don't know if you're familiar with those. That's where people take kind of construction type things. Right, right. Uh, wood, old sinks, right. you know, light fixtures, whatever. And they put them in this... Um, Reha uh, 
Habitat. Restore, yeah. Restore, they yeah. call it a restore here. Mm -hmm. So I thought I'd take a trip over there, and what did I find? I found these two bins of slats that were from an old bench, and I thought oh. that would be great, and I kept thinking about it. And right. I thought, well, if they're there at the end of the day, it's meant to be. Right. Well, then about an hour later, I thought, well, I'm just going to go back and get them, and the one bin was gone. Oh, no. I couldn't believe it, and the store was empty oh, when I was there. No. <laughs> so you got to be quick over at those That's stores. Right. If you want something, you got to pick it up. So I ended up picking up the bench when I'll have to take apart. It was only part of a bench. Oh, okay. But I got it really for the slats because my plan is um, to make a um, child's bench like a oh, little that bench. Oh, so cute. For, yeah, it'll be cute. So I've got all these things in my head that I want to do right. and make and so those are two of the things I picked up mm -hmm. and I also picked up a um, uh, bandsaw today mm -hmm. was our trip. Mm -hmm. uh, Colleen was nice enough to get me bandsaw for my uh, birthday, mm -hmm. which is coming up. Yes, so it is. So I appreciate that, Colleen. You're very welcome. Thank you so much. And I can't wait to put that up. And that will be another video that I can show exactly. you how that works. Um, what else have I been able to get? Uh, wood, oh, I, I have a little guy uh, down the street from us. It's kind of strange because we live in kind of a suburban kind of area. Mm -hmm. And it's all these brand new homes and a lot of the homes. And then right. there's this farmer's field right in the middle of it. Yeah. And he's, he sells corn and he sells vegetables. Pumpkins. And pumpkins. And it's just like this old farm, old school, right on the main road. Right. And we go over there and he sells uh, lumber. Yes, and, he does. And scrap lumber, like That's oak right. and white oak, all kinds of lumber, like white oak, cedar, poplar. And he sells it for like like a song, like not very much money. Right, right. And some of the wood, I can't believe the prices, because if you go to the big box store, for a strip of oak, they might want $20. Oh, And wow. he'll sell me like a bundle of oak for $10. Oh, my goodness. So, um, been That's getting amazing. wood from there, but I can't show you it on the right. on, on here. And um, so just those little things have been, been making me very happy. Oh, we like when makes so happy. So the spring is coming. The yep. garage door is going to be open soon. Yep. I'm going to be able to get in there and, and finish that table. Mm -hmm. That's another thing I've been working oh, on. Oh, that's right. Um, is that table. I'm trying to refinish it, but the weather hasn't been warm yeah. enough to be able to use the Warmer stripper. Warmer than 10 degrees. Yep. Yep, for that stripper. So yep. uh, anyway, so lots going on, but um, not much happening here. So. Right. <laughs> So those are our souvenirs and thank you so much for watching. If you like what you're seeing, give us a thumbs up, comment down below. Put the bell. Oh, I always for notifications. That. <laughs> she does. I, uh, yep. For notifications. Which it's only thing I remember. That's okay. It's good she remembers. <laughs> yeah. um, and if there is some little something that you'd like to buy at a craft booth, comment down below let me know because I'm always looking at new things to make things to do um we still have some of our soap and lotions and those kind of things but just some other little new ideas that are always helpful for us and we really do like doing this for you so subscribe because that helps us so much so until next time you take care